What's good, my statisticians? This is Professor Sanson from PSI Love Math. Back with another statistical banger. Last class, we talked about all types of measures of center. Now we're going to be moving into probability. So sit back, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to my channel. And what's the probability that you eat crab legs too? I'm out of here. Woohoo! Them crabs was good. So now it's time to get back to talking about the addition rule probability. We just finished giving all the definitions in the last video. So if you didn't see the last video with all the definitions, it is a link below somewhere. And if I don't, if it don't pop up up there, that means I don't know how to do it. All of that aside, you should look at the last video so you can get all the definitions and terms down. But we're going into particular rules now. So we introduced probability with the definitions. Now we're going into the particular rules. Let's start with the biggest point we want to make here. And that is that if I can make it bigger, I would. Probability is always a number between zero and one. Can I repeat that 92 times for you? Probability is always a number between zero and one. If you do a probability and you get an answer that's greater than one or negative, then you know your answer is already what? Wrong. Probability is a number and mathematically, this is how we write it. Zero is less than or equal to the probability of whatever the event is, is less than or equal to one. How can you have zero probability? It's the chance of something just not happening at all. For example, what's the probability of getting a seven on a single die? That's zero. The probability of getting a seven on a single die is zero. Why? Because there's no seven on a single die, only one through six. So the probability of seven is zero. That's just that it will never happen. And then what about the probability of one? Well, the probability of one is something that's always going to happen. So what about the probability of getting a number between one and six on a die? That's going to be one because the probability of getting a number to between one and six, if you do the formula from last time, the probability of something between one and six is six over the total, which is six, that's equal to one. So you can have the probability equal zero or one or anything in between. Between. Usually it's the anything in between. The other rule, now you may have to check with your instructor. The other rule is the rounding rule for probability is for decimal places. For decimal places. I'm going to say or for now. Four decimal places or a simplified fraction. Four decimal places when you have decimal places or a simplified fraction. Let's work on these properties of probabilities. There are three properties of probability. The first one we just talked about is for an event E, for any event E, the probability that E has to be between zero and one. So the second properties of probability is sample space. So sample space, which we're going to, which we label S, is that the probability of that sample space has got to be equal to one. Basically, when you add up all the probabilities of each particular individual element in that sample space, you're going to get one. Think about it like this. If you have a, if you have a coin, you have a one out of two chance of getting a head plus a one out of two chance of getting a tail, which is two out of two, which is equal to one. So your sample space, the probability of your sample space is going to be equal to one. And then the empty set, which is indicated by a zero with a slash through it, is what we said before. The probability of an event, just the empty set not happening, the probability of the empty set is zero. So those are the three things that I went up over at the top, but they are actually properties for probability. So let's move on to these events. We already said that E is the subset of outcomes from a sample space. Then we have something that is labeled E with the little C up there which we call a compliment. Not a compliment, you know, not a compliment like, oh, Professor Samson, your hair looks so good today. Uh, not that type of compliment. The compliment is the set of all outcomes in the sample space that are not E. So E complement are the, are the outcomes that are not E. So you have the E, the outcome, and the opposite of the outcome. What do you think that's going to be? That's going to equal your whole sample. Sample space. So 
Let's get an example. I'm going back to the die. A die has six sides. What is the probability of getting a five? The probability of getting a five is one out of six. If we add that to the probability of not getting five, it's going to be five out of six. That's six out of six, which equals one. Element, or the E, and its complement have to do what? They have to be equal to one. E plus its complement is going to equal the full sample space. As you saw, you had all the numbers in that sample space. The probability of something happening plus the probability of something not happening is the total probability. All this really leads us up to the title of this section, which is the addition rule. Let's talk about this addition rule. The probability of E or F. The word or in math means addition. So the probability of one event or the other event. Probability of E or F is equal to probability of E plus the probability of F minus the probability of E and F. That means the probability of one thing plus the probability of another thing, you have to subtract out anything that's together. I have no idea what you're talking about. You have to subtract out anything that it has in common. The probability of getting an even number or a six. My preference is that you write this out because it's going to be easier for you when you're taking the test because all of this stuff gets in the way and starts to confuse you. But if you don't, that's fine. So what it is, is the probability of an even number plus the probability of six, then minus the probability that something is even and a six. So let's see, what's the probability of a even number. Well, the probability of an even number is two, four, six. It's three out of six, right? Plus the probability of a six is one out of six. Minus the probability of an even, that's a six. That's going to be one. Right? Minus one out of six. That's going to give you three out of six or one half. Again, you write one half or you write 0.5000. But do not write both of them. One answer, no or answer. There's no or in that. Because what usually happens is when students write or because they're confused at what way to give their answer. They write or because, and then one answer is usually right and one answer is usually wrong. For example, in this class, it's either a reduced fraction or four decimal places. A student would give me this answer. They would say one half or, they, they wouldn't write or, sorry. They write one half equals 0.5. Well, actually, this answer is right and this answer is wrong. So when students write equal to or one half or 0.5, that just indicates you don't know what the answer is. You need to give me one answer only and say this, I'm the bomb.com, Professor Sampson, and this is my answer. And I could be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how you would do it. And I know some of you are already screaming and trying to fast forward past the video. I could have did that in my head. You could have. I don't suggest it because everything seems easy at first until you start piling on it. So my suggestion is to take the step-by-step -step approach. The other thing about the complement that you must know, remember, this is just a mathematical equation. So you know that we said P of E plus the probability of its complement, right, is equal to one. You can do mathematical manipulations to this. You can say that P probability of E is equal to what? One minus the probability of the complement, right? Because you would subtract it from that side then subtract it from this side. This we use often because sometimes it's easier to figure out the complement than it is to figure out the actual thing that we're looking for. So here's our first of two examples for this addition rule. So what I do with this is a lot of you have problems with word problems and you have to really get over the word problems by thinking that this is a math class so the reading is not necessarily it. So when I read, the first thing I want to start with is this down here. What's the question? Especially in probability problems. I want to know what's the question. So my first step is to say before you see, I haven't even read this to you. It says that we want to know what is the probability that you are randomly assigned a doctor trained in a special procedure, so special procedure, or a doctor under the age of 45. Now, you could have just abbreviated this the probability of SP or under 45. So you see what I'm going to do? Look, I haven't even read it yet. I'm going to write it out, the probability of the special doctor or whatever, plus, because it's the or, the probability of under 45 minus the probability that the, he is a 
special doctor and under 45. So this is my formula. Now I just need to go back to the problem and pull out my number. So hopefully for some of you, this is making it easier to read. Suppose that four out of 15 doctors in a small hospital are trained in a special procedure. So who, how many in a special procedure? Four out of 15. Plus, then it says 11 out of 15 are under 45. Under 45 is right here. 11 out of 15 is under 45. Minus the probability that they are special procedures and under 45. And two are both trained in special procedures and under age 45. So two out of the 15, you get 13 out of 15. I can use this answer or this answer, but I can't use them both. Right now, please like, comment, and subscribe. All right, same here, you wanna find the probability Consider the experiment in which two six-sided die are tossed. What is the probability the total is not four? Now we want to know not four. Let's think about this. Not four, remember we had that formula, the probability of something plus the probability of it not being something is equal to one. And then I said, okay, let's rearrange that. We want to know the probability of it, not four. If I think about doing a six-sided dice, is my sample size, I'm going to tell you, is 36 possibilities. Do I want to list 36 possibilities? No, I don't want to list 36 possibilities. So this is one of those chance dis this is one of those times where it's easier. What's the probability that the total is not four? This is the probability that the total is four. What's the probability that the total is not four? What we're trying to find is the probability of not four. So we know the probability of not four plus the probability of four has got to be equal to one. What's easier, the probability of not four or the probability of four? So what we're going to do is say the probability of not four is going to be equal to one minus the probability of four. Why do we do that? Because it's easier to figure out the probability of four in your head than it is to list 36 six combinations of it being not four. Because what's the probability of throwing two dice and you get a four? The first dice you can get a one, and that means the second dice you get a three. The first dice you get a two, and the second dice you get a two. So the first dice you can get a three, and then the second dice you get a one. These are the only possibilities of getting a four. These are the only possibilities of getting a four. There are only three possibilities of getting a four. So we can figure out the probability of not four by figuring out the probability probability of getting a four, unless we want to list all 36 combinations. So you got one minus the probability of four. Now, am I going to put one minus four there? No, because the probability has to be what? Less than one. The probability is a fraction, remember? It's a part of a whole. So we know there are 36 possibilities and, and three of those 36 are not four. The rest of the 36 are four. So one minus three out of 36 is going to give us our probability of not four, because the probability of not four is one minus the probability of four. One minus parenthesis three over 36. That's how you would do it if you're not as calculator savvy as me. And then your answer would be a decimal anyway. So your answer would be 0.916. And that will be your answer. Now, those of you who know your calculator, you know that it, to change a decimal to a fraction, you hit math and then you hit enter twice. So if I hit math and then enter, enter, it's going to change it to a fraction. So you can use 0.9167 or 11 out of 12. Your answer is either 11 over 12 or, and put 0.9167. You can use either the decimal or the simplified fraction, but not both. So those are our two examples. Just the last thing we're going to do real quick is something called mutually exclusive and then we're done. Mutually exclusive just means that the things cannot occur at the same time. That's all mutually exclusive means. You can, they cannot happen at the same time. So they are mutually exclusive. The equation for things that are mutually exclusive, since there's no overlap, this is the probability of E plus the probability of F. We know that these are mutually exclusive, meaning they have no overlap. I hope that this helped you to understand the addition rule. Please like, comment, and subscribe to get me to those two before. This is Professor Sampson from PS I Love Math, and I'm Just out. Give it up. Your girl and I never will be Don't call me up Don't waste your time Cause I'll be your enemy